Um, I have two questions I'm going to try to get in here, but I don't know if you can do it in five minutes. The first question is privacy, Sheriff Dart, and I think that Mr. Bozzella uh, raised a good point. Uh, we all know that uh, there are circumstances where uh, there may be a dispute as to ownership of a car, maybe a, a testy divorce proceeding or whatever it happens to be, and the automobile, uh, automobile uh, manufacturers certainly want to cooperate with legitimate law enforcement but don't want to get caught in a tangle, leaves them open to liability. That's my first question, and I'll come to you in just a minute to start the answer. The second question, Mr. Glowey, I asked the CEO of Walgreens, why is underarm deodorant under lock and key in your stores of all the things you sell? And he said, because there's a secondary market for retail theft. And that underarm deodorant is going to end up in a flea market or online, along with a lot of other things. And so we're trying to stop the theft at the source, with the smash and grab and the like. Has there been something in the world of automobiles and uh, that has created a secondary market or some part of this that uh, you'll, you might address after Sheriff Dart uh, speaks to privacy. Thank you so much, Senator. Uh, I heard the privacy um, issue brought up, and it's real to a certain extent. But for starters, the victims are there with us, and they've given consent, and they want this done. A, if there are bad actors, if there are bad actors who are using this for the wrong purpose, there are plenty of ways, uh, as a former prosecutor, that you can charge these people for that. Um, so I, I do not think that's the reason we should be paralyzed here because I was out with our people on a carjacking mission uh, last week and I cannot tell you the difference. It was such a great I idea of how this could work. We had one car that we were tracking. We had active tracking going on. Our biggest question was what one of our cars was going to pull him over and arrest him. He was a person with a parole warrant and he had, uh, was in for shooting at police officers. We, we got him in custody, no issues. In another car that we were working with, we were in the backseat of the car with um, license plate readers looking for cars that are on our list because there's warrants for them, they've been stolen, carjacking, so on. By the time the license plate reader hits, though, it's four seconds before we get it. They're on the expressway in the Dan Ryan. They're now five miles down. Just we're completely operating in the dark. When it's tracked, we're there right on top of it. When it's not tracked, it's completely, completely random, and we occasionally will get lucky. And so that's why this privacy issue, it's real, but it absolutely cannot be stopping this and slowing this thing down because we need this right now. I mean, this could be the game changer. The other things can be impactful a little bit. The tracking's everything. Mr. Bozzella, you want to say a word before I turn to Mr. Glowey? I, I would simply say that um, we're, we're looking to work with law enforcement to find a way to get this balance right. And we think we're making progress in that regard. Um, and we think that we can do this in a way that balances consumer privacy uh, with the consumer's need uh, to be protected from carjacking. Maybe the industry could start by having a consistent uh, piece of technology uh, as opposed to many different ones, as you mentioned. Mr. Glowey, would you like to comment on the secondary market issue? Sure. Chairman Durbin, thank you for the question. Um, we have long-standing relationships with the Federal Bureau of Investigation, Department of Homeland Security and Customs and Border Protection specifically, and state and local law enforcement in all 50 states and U.S. territories. Um, this topic is very near, very near and dear to NICB. We have done car investigations for over 100 years. So regarding secondary markets, the carjackings are usually associated in a conspiracy of other violations, criminal drive-by shootings and other offenses. But the secondary market for auto thefts or cars that are stolen is also different. We've seen a 39% increase in used vehicles over the last two years, approximately. There's a high supply, a high demand, and a low supply. Cars are being stolen here in the United States. There's VIN swaps that are utilized to, to resell the vehicles, so they're not known that they are stolen. They're shipped overseas, Middle East criminal enterprises. They go outbound, many of you are aware. They were funding for terrorism investigations, especially Lebanese Hezbollah, in my prior capacity as uh, department head uh, for intelligence for DHS. We've talked about that in our past. And then cars are also shipped to Mexico. We, we repatriate hundreds of cars a year that are shipped into Mexico after they're stolen. So, Senator, there is an extensive organized crime, criminal conspiracy throughout the United States and worldwide uh, on the supply chain, on stolen vehicles, and we could even get into catalytic converters. So there is a lot of profit to be made right now in this industry for the crime and for the criminals. Senator Grassley. Thank you, Mr. Chairman. Thanks 